Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to our meeting place call, Team Patchination. Welcome all you uh, associates and those that uh, uh, may be joining us for the first time. Um, Paul and I uh, sort of decided that, uh, hey, maybe we need, with all the things happening, maybe we need to um, look at possibly doing a QA and a um, for those that might have some questions on uh, things that you're struggling with, uh, things that you may have questions about. And then if we can't answer it, we will do our best to get you the answers um, as fast as we possibly can. So um, lots of changes going on, Paul. Yeah, crazy. Uh, I know it's kind of a little bit overwhelming sometimes, but uh, I mean, it's all for uh, for a reason. Um so yeah, we just have to uh, you know embrace what's happening. It's pretty cool. Um, so much going on. Dallas coming up. So lots of momentum happening. And uh, but yeah, that comes with uh, with change, which uh, we we don't like um, most of us anyway. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you have to pivot though and just move with what's what's happening. So yeah, and yeah, certainly, we're to... yeah, certainly change is always uh, tough to maneuver and stay up with and so on but uh you know change is uh change can be certainly quite good and you know we have the excitement of um, dallas coming up in uh, a couple weekends from now and uh, if you're going to be going to Gal dallas uh put uh right dallas in the um in the chat group and let's have a look at uh, how many people are going and for those of you that are going it should be a great time and and those of the, you that can't go uh maybe the next one maybe the next one you can go on but Really excited about seeing everybody in Dallas and seeing the excitement of the, you know, customer co-op program that's going to be uh, talked about and uh, launched. So definitely going to be an exciting time. But um, we wanted to come on here, Paul and I, and do the best. We do the best we can on our team patchination group to try to keep everybody as up to date and as current with information that that we know and that we find out. Um, but we don't always get to everybody and people don't always get their questions answered maybe as as promptly as they would like to. So we thought maybe this is a time where um, people could ask uh, questions and Paul and I can do our best to uh, to answer those questions. So if you if you have any questions, all you have to do is raise your hand on here um, and uh, we'd be happy to do our best to answer. So. Anybody have any questions about uh, what's back office, comp plan, signups, um, smart ship, you name it. Anybody have information they want to offer, um, some plugs? Anybody want to tell a story, some excitement of what they had in their happen in their business in the last week? We're open to just having a, a chat here. Oh, good. Chanda. Hello. Thank Hi, you. Hi, Tanda. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Nice to hear from you. Well, thanks for uh, answering questions. Um, I just heard of somebody that was in a different network marketing company um, that decided to have other things on the side that they were doing like a coaching service and affiliate marketing things. Um, and they were kicked out of their company. Um, and I was, I have not read cover to cover our policies and procedures. I've read a lot of it, uh, but it is seems slightly contradicting on some things and really hard for me to understand. I'm not a lawyer. Um, and I was wondering, is do we have anything in our policy that uh, says that we are not allowed to have our own coaching programs or services like that, um, or being in another network marketing or affiliate marketing programs? Yeah, do you want to tackle that one, Paul, or do you want me to tackle it? I'm happy to. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, so Chenna, in most cases, probably somebody that was kicked out. There's probably more to the story um, that uh, than what you're hearing. But um, in particular, with the uh, Super Patch Company, there's there's no um, problem being 
um, and doing a second network marketing company. The issue becomes an issue when you're doing a second network marketing company and you're trying to recruit people from the super patch company. So, you know, you have to be careful that, you know, you don't reach out to somebody and say that's in super patch and say, Hey, I'm doing super patch too, but Hey, you, you should join me in this other business here. That's called cross recruiting. And that's a no, no. So, okay. I think theirs was more, um, they were a coach for all different kinds of network marketing companies and they were uh, recruiting um, or having their teammates join their coaching program. Yeah. So, and, I mean, that's still cross recruiting to something different, right? And from one business to another. And generally most most companies, and I'm not familiar with the company you're talking about or nor have I read their policies and procedures, but most companies will try to protect their field by simply saying that you can, you know, people aren't going to stop you from making a living. However, they are going to protect their field. And so when you are doing a coaching, um, unless you've had written authorization from uh, the company itself, if you're recruiting somebody to coach them and you're making money from uh, that program, um, and it's a network marketing or an affiliate program, um, that would be found frowned upon, I'm sure. So, you know, the best thing is, is that if you're doing a second business that, um, you know, you, you don't try and recruit from, uh, you know, from the super patch company to a coaching platform or another network marketing company. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Kim McDermott, I saw you raising your hand because I can see you on the screen, but I know you wanted to raise your hand hand on the screen, but just go and unmute because I could see you. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and unmute. There we go. I was trying to think and do it at the same time. I should not. <laughs> I should pause. Hi, everybody. Great to see you, Terry. Paul. Good to see you, Kim. Um, just you a quick question for you to either one of you to validate so we have clarity on those of us that like to do events. When we are having uh, an event, all banners that should have our personal name, ID, and independent associate on the banner, as well as our flyers. Am I clear on this? That's uh, it's a, a tricky one uh, because... <laughs> we used to always just be able to have banners up there, but of course your own material should have had, you know, your information, obviously with websites, independent associate, all that. Um, in terms of the banner situation that I don't know a hundred percent. Um, if they require that on there, that would be the first that, that I've heard of this. Um, so definitely need clarity on that. I haven't done as many shows as I used to in the past. So I'm sort of not up to speed with this. But what um, another thing I'll clarify here that now that we're talking about events is you don't have to get approval to do a craft show or a wellness show or the, the only thing that you need approved when there was chatter about that was if you take a banner and you have a slogan or you've modified something that's not from the website or in the back office or something like that, then you'd have to get it approved by head office before you display it. So that's what they meant by I think we may have lost Paul. Yeah, he's kind of frozen. <laughs> hey, I need a picture of your booth kind of thing. You're uh, you're freezing and unfreezing and freezing, Paul. Really, eh? Yeah. yeah you're... <laughs> Not now. You don't feel it? Good. You're good now. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Maybe you the had kids you locked are, in the uh, position. <laughs> yeah, the the, the, uh, the kids are streaming or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted some clarity on that because you know some of us. I still do uh, some events, nowhere near like what I used to. So I just wanted to make sure um, we used to. I have my team borrowing banners and stuff, but I don't want to see banners out there if they're not compliant. 
And I have talked to Steph Taylor in BC in regards to getting a banner made. And I wanted to make sure that we can at least still borrow each other's yeah. banners and that, you know, because. Yeah, I know you probably won't need independent associate because the ones that are in the back office right now, um, they don't they don't have anything on it except for the graphics so you can use it and go get your own banner made and it doesn't have independent associate on it okay yeah, just also a, oh sorry sorry can i interrupt um i i just sent something into compliance um a couple of weeks ago okay. for events and i have a form that i have made up that people fill out that helps me with follow up and the only change they asked me to make, I said I had to put independent associate of the super patch company. I didn't have to put my ID on that because it's on my business card. Yeah, that's fine. I, I think that, and great point, Rosemary. I think the biggest thing is, Kim, if you're handing out material, yeah, any material that you're handing out to, to give to people for follow-up contact information has to have independent associate on there. Yeah, that much point. I knew on the flyer. I just wanted to clarify on the bed. Yeah, I don't okay, think thanks guys. Yeah. yeah. Um just a quick question. Are you doing any um kind of training of anything sort tonight? There's some new people on here and I'm just wondering potential doing any type of presentation on any part of uh no I mean we'll we'll do our opportunity uh call tomorrow night Kim and tonight okay. is basically um just to um have a chat with those from the field any new guests that are on here that might have questions that we can help with that they may have not uh had answered yet at this point um okay. but training specifically whether it's facebook training or whatever no this call is, was scheduled and posted as a q a okay so tomorrow night is an opportunity call every tuesday night at 9 p.m eastern yes, 9 it's also an opportunity call that anybody obviously can get on guests new people okay and it's actually it's actually a double header tomorrow it starts i'm starting uh a UK Europe call tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, which is 7 p.m. Uh, UK and 8 p.m. Europe. So it's going to be the same uh, presentation that Lisa Cito does and and uh, that Michelle just did. Same uh, same thing. 20 minutes, uh, you know, 10 minutes of testimonials, and those will be double headers every Tuesday now. So you can invite anyone to any call because the 2 p.m. Eastern might be okay for someone in North America. Chances are the UK Europe call wouldn't be unless somebody's up during the night. Um, so at least it gives the ability for us to like hit all markets that we're in at a reasonable time for everybody. So uh, eventually I want to find somebody that wants to head up the UK Europe call and do the presentation, make it feel like it's Europe, it's UK, it's you know, someone from there doing it, but we'll work up to that. And then we're also, whoever wants to give a shot at the opportunity call, we're open to that because we want you guys to, you know, start, start doing that kind of stuff. And that really helps you grow and uh, just be a presence out there. And, and it's a, it's a great thing to do. So just realize we're looking for that also, but um, that's, uh, that's what's yeah. happening. In that respect. That's in the handbook as well, Kim. Yes. The the times and so on of those calls are in the handbook. Yes, um, um, I I just I did pass on the handbook to it, and um, we've got some people that Paul and I've been talking to, and um, we're getting them dribbling in. Great. Here. Well, whoever's new on here, welcome. <laughs> great to have you here. <laughs> yeah, Paul Deb's on tonight. Oh, great. Yeah. Glad to have you, Deb. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope that answered your question, Kim. It does. Thank you very much, both of you. Okay. Shirley, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Um, I, 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 I wanted some information on when you're doing orders. Do you know if there's any, I was looking in the handbook and I didn't see anything because I'm new. And when I put in my orders, um, I was wondering uh, when you put it under the customer's name, is there any training on that, on how to do it and um, helping you through it? I, I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, any sir. videos on how to do your orders? So are you talking customer orders or your own personal orders as an associate? Uh, customer orders. So there isn't any specific training on it, Shirley. 
Um, but it's like you wouldn't be a video on it, eh? Because <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I had a lady call me um, with a three hundred dollar order from Toronto, and I said, "Well, I said you can go on and order it yourself on on um, the Superpass site on on my site." And she said, "It's too complicated." And and I agree with her. It's very um. It's not user friendly, you know, and she was like, no, I'd rather you order it for me. But then to get it to her, I was trying to have it delivered to her uh, in Toronto. And I I just couldn't get through it enough to, to, to do that. And I was asking Jeanne about it. She's head of me and she wasn't sure if there was any training on that either. Uh, Jen Poirier? Yes. Yeah, well, um, there isn't any specific training uh, that we we have done or that corporate has done. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's e-commerce. Um, it's ordering online. It's no different than, you know, ordering from Amazon or anything else. You, before you shop, you have to set up a customer profile and it will ask yeah. you questions. And so if you're signing up or if you're buying on, behalf of your customer and you're going in as if you were that customer then you just utilize their information you put in their credit card information and yeah. as long as their credit card information um it matches the delivery uh location then there's not a problem but however for credit card billing information doesn't match your delivery information then you have to change the shipping after you fill in the information okay and okay I can also jump in here and kind of answer your question is there would not be training because it's not really okay to do that using someone else's card on their behalf. That's not. Yeah, um, no, I was just thinking. So there's no it, way that we would have some sort of training on here's how to do it the way you're not really allowed to do it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, even if we had steps in the handbook, you know. Uh, yeah, on, it's not, on ordering, it's, it's, but and... I would never, but I would never do that either, because okay. regardless, it's the company that's just not something you can't you can't order on behalf of someone else, putting their information and in, almost acting like you are that person. That's yeah, not, but, that's not you allowed. know, like we could do like John Doe type thing, and um, no, it's just no, a but question it's still, it's still it's still training somebody to do something that's not compliant, is what I'm trying to say. There's okay. no do that that's just not she should go on order get the 25 percent off have it shipped to her her email her address all that stuff or else it gets very complicated i know there's some that won't but at the yeah. end of the case maybe have them call in on your behalf with your number and then customer service would run the order through that's the way i would okay do it. so maybe i can tell her that option then yeah because they feel more comfortable that way and then they exactly. can take the credit card information and then it's all done the right way, right? Right. Okay. That's that's a good option. Thank you very much. Okay. You're Thanks, welcome. Shirley. Um, Paul Vandeman. Hey, good evening, everybody. So um, thanks, Paul Austin. Um, if it weren't for you today, I would have been, <laughs> I don't know, I ended up calling head office, got the message that there's, you know, I, I had a five minute wait that turned into, you know, dropping the call at one point and starting over wow. again. And anyway, it, you know, ended up being 40 minutes that I waited to get on. Um, and then as I was waiting, I was looking through and I noticed your uh, response or somebody said about a response you gave to the brand champion program. Um, that there's that there's a that there um that there's there was a glitch because i happened to get a call this afternoon from someone who was trying to they the code wasn't working or like the the system wasn't working for them so um number one thank you that that I, somehow whatever i was able to find the answer that right now there's a glitch in the system um, I guess my question is, is how do we, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put a ticket through 
Um, but if there's a glitch in the system, somebody needs to let the field know, and, and it should come from head office. And I know here we don't have control over head office, but it's just, it's frustrating when I get a call from somebody and I'm, you know, trying to find the answer for them and, uh, and then to find out that we've got a glitch in the system. So again, just, I guess, better communication. And I'm not putting, <laughs> if it weren't for uh, the UK site that I was on, seeing that somebody said that they had been talking to you and that there was presently a glitch in the system, I wouldn't even have known. And, and I wanted to get back to this customer of mine. So um, I don't know if you have any other suggestions as to, you know, how we, what we can do to, you know, just better the communications between head office and ourselves. Yeah, Paul, I mean, I go on a leadership call as Paul does every Friday. And, um, you know, we, as leaders in this company, we tend to get as frustrated, I'm sure as some of you do as well, but we're working very, very diligently to, you know, keep things positive when they're implementing a new phone system that they're struggling with. And that's one of the issues there that it's a new mm -hmm. phone system. And the biggest thing is, is that like all of us, we can be very impatient trying to get answers right away. And if they have 200 plus tickets in, in the queue, you may not get answers right away. So, I mean, email is always, uh, you know. Raised hand and it's not doing lower hand. Terry, if you make me co-host, I have no control, so I can't help you out. <laughs> Hang on one second. Raise hand, lower hand, reaction. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you. Um, anyways, as frustrating as it is, Paul, they're trying to update systems or yeah. hire new people. They've hired five more people. Okay. Um, but hiring people in customer service role is not always as easy as we think because they have to be trained. Have no, be I get that. Up. I get that. I, I'm just saying that, you know, like I had no I idea that Paul, I don't know what your question new... is then. I don't know what your question well, is. Uh, well, I just, I just don't. I, you know, I, I guess it's a question I'm I'm going to ask of head office as to, you know, like if they're putting in a new phone system, they should let us know so that we can understand that there's maybe a problem. Agree, agree with you 100%. Yeah, I put requests because in to be I didn't honest. know, right? Hey, I put, yeah, the request in for the phone system for the brand champion program and for the fact that Lumi is sold out and is no longer available and won't be back hopefully tomorrow, but there's no guarantee on that. So I, with you a billion percent, totally out of her control we can only just suggest all this stuff on our friday meetings and hope that yeah it gets implemented and yeah the phone systems thank gosh are being converted over so it's okay. uh just it's quite the project um so yeah. we'll have some instability yeah. for a little bit till that's done yeah. so but we okay, understand thanks yeah. frustration we're with you yeah, thanks because it's not about me i i can wait on the phone that's not but i want to get back to the customer and that and that's it's all about the customer for me Hundred percent. It is for us too, Paul. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking my call. I feel like the old radio show days. Um, yeah, I just want to make a comment on the banners. Um, I was told, and what I have been doing is on the bottom of my banners. I I put a couple of pictures up, but I have been told you need to have your name, your ID. And again, independent associate on that banner. So they want everything to you individually. So I guess if you're sending, if you're loaning out a banner to somebody, that's no problem. Providing for what my understanding has been, there's got to be a name on the bottom, an associate ID, and it has to state independent associate of Super Patch Company. So I'm just putting that out there to everybody who's out doing events, because KD is. And uh, that's what I'm doing on my banner. So I uh, just put that up for the field. Okay, thanks, that's Kev. Good. Oh, for sure. Thank you. And those of you that have banners, you can have uh, stickers made. Uh, um, peel away stickers to go on your current banners as well, if that's the case uh, as of now. So I'm not, I wasn't aware of that, Kevin, either. But uh, uh, if that's the case, it makes sense because then it aligns with everything else that you're you're handing out yeah. and so on. So. Okay, thanks for that. Welcome.
Okay, Stephanie Tollers, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Good. So I had um, two practitioners come into the business just within the last couple of days, um, unexpectedly. What do I do from here to help them? Um, well, if you had practitioners come in, did they come in with a practitioner um, account or did they come in with an associate account? One came in with an associate account and then signed herself up as a practitioner. One just came in with a practitioner. Great. So um, first thing I would ask them is, what do you guys want out of this and how can I help you get it? Mm -hmm. And if they want to build, there's lots of training on how to build. Getting on SmartShip is the key mm -hmm. factor. And then building three legs minimum. Is there a separate like training call for them or a separate any kind of call for practitioners? Uh, not that I'm aware of that's specific to practitioner, Stephanie. Um, okay. The practitioner that signed up just to be a practitioner, the only advantage they have is that they get to purchase the product at 50% off. Right. Um, I had talked to her. I went to like a networking thing one night, uh, talked to her for five minutes, got home that night. She enrolled herself as a practitioner. Nice. So... Yeah, we didn't even talk about, I didn't even demo her, didn't really even go into the technology. Just give a brief, a brief synopsis of what the company is, what the technology has the capability of doing. And she came yeah. in. So, I mean, I've had success and I'm sure that Paul can vouch for this and many more. It's, it's really finding out and sitting down with them. They've joined. It's great. They've joined. Um, and the next thing is to find out what what do you want out of this? What, what's mm -hmm. what's your goals? Because you know what your goals are, but you don't know what theirs mm -hmm. are, but they're on your team. Okay. And so yeah, I just didn't know if there was yeah, a separate I would sit, call I would sit or a support down. system. What's that, Steph? Sorry. I just didn't know if there was a separate call or a separate support system for practitioners specifically. No, not necessarily okay. for pra practitioners, but um, um, they are welcome to get on our training calls or welcome to, um, you know, obviously ask questions. Um, and we have lots of, you know, practitioners that are, utilizing this in their clinics to sell to their patients and so on and mm -hmm. holding some inventory obviously in, in their clinics. And, um, and so, you know, the, the practitioner, the nice thing about the practitioner's account now, if they do want to build a team and have an additional stream of income as, as opposed to just wholesale to retail, mm -hmm. then they can create a, an associate account and have their uh, practitioner account underneath that. So if they have other practitioners that want to join them, do they join under their associate account and do the same thing, then open a separate practitioner they, account? They have to have an associate in, account in order to enroll people. Okay. You can't, you can't enroll as a practitioner only. You can't build a downline. So, so if my if my one practitioner just came in as a practitioner, can she retrace her steps and also come in as an associate? Yeah, I think what you can do is call customer service and, and say that you didn't even get a chance to talk to your um, practitioner. Um, but they want to sign up as an associate and want, they want their practitioner account moved under their associate account. Okay, perfect. And Thank they, you. They, they will be able to make the move for you. Okay. Sorry I didn't get to see you in Florida, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's <our> next time. <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. I'm still here, by the way, but I'm just down, down oh. to now. Well, then I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah, so hook, reach out. We'll hook up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good Thanks. talking to you. <laughs> And Terry, just on the topic of the, the the practitioner there, so the reason you're allowed to put the um, practitioner account under your associate account is you're not going to get commission off of your purchases, but you're going to get the volume go towards um, your, yourself. So just there's been some confusion on what that is. So just remember, you you buy it, it's not double dipping because you're not saving 50% and then making 15% off of that order. <laughs> You're not getting that commission, but you are going to have that go towards your volume. So that makes total sense and why your uh, practitioner can enroll themselves under themselves. So, yeah, so it goes towards your team group qualifying volume. Yeah, correct. Okay, thanks, Steph. Great question. Um, Carol, good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to make this. This isn't a question, but this is kind of uh, based on what Paul was saying. And I've sent it in, I've emailed it in twice and I've told Angie, but I've got you guys here. So I'm just gonna maybe ask this because there are so many things that 
if you aren't on Facebook and don't happen to be in the news feed on Team Passion Nation, you would miss it. And I have requested something we had in a prior company. I said, is I have all the list of all these people's birthdays and anniversaries and all of that stuff that there be a news feed in our back office where important things are posted. So in other words, you know, like if you were having trouble, you could go to the back office and see, is there anything posted about that, that this is why nobody's getting through? It would save a lot of frustration, just like what Paul was referring to. So I'm just going to mention it to the two of you again. That would be so helpful. It's nice, you know, where they have like, this is what they posted on Instagram and so forth. But just to have, we used to call it news you can use. And there was always something there every Friday. But if there was something urgent came up, it was there. So if we were having an issue, we just would go to our back office and go, oh, yep, that's it, rather than calling this person, this person, and this person. So I don't know if that's ever been talked about, if that's something that could be. But, And I'll just give you an example. We've heard from our upline that there's a sus on Saturday night, but we haven't seen it anywhere else. So like some of my team is questioning, is this real? Are we going to be the only ones wearing tie-dye shirts and bell-bottom jeans on Saturday night? You know, because if it's company-wide, it should be posted on our back office company site. We shouldn't rely on Teams Facebook groups because it rolls down too quickly and people miss things, I feel. So... Paul, you want to touch on that one from the leadership calls? Uh, yeah, so uh, totally. I mean, we, we've we talked about how stuff is all over the place and, 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 you know, like we need to get updated and timely manners and all that stuff. But I think that their huge effort is being put into this app. And then this app is what's going to spit everything out at us. So mm -hmm. for now, they're just using Instagrams and things like that to... And I get it. Not everybody's on Instagram or those social medias. Maybe they build it a total different way, but they should be able to have access to what's happening and, and being updated, whether it's an email or or whatever it is. But I guess this new app is going to be what's going to be talking to us and, you okay. know, making everything all in one place and, and all that kind of stuff. So, hey. <laughs> oh, I, so that okay. new app will be like shooting out important yes. updates for us to know. Yeah, and, and, and Carol, that's... I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more with regard yeah. to updates. I mean, we've talked about it a number of times with Debbie Curley, and you know, at times she's only human and gets inundated mm -hmm. with with stuff. And as they're trying to, you know, implement these these new systems and get new staff up to speed with customer service based on yeah. growth, but it is frustrating. I mean, we heard through the yeah. grapevine that there was a '70s night or whatever it was in Dallas, and you know, we've, we've talked about, you know, and pushed Paul and I have pushed on leadership calls and said, guys, you need to communicate better with the field and mm -hmm. so on. So we're, we're, we're the squeaky wheel, so to speak, as best yeah. we can okay. without, um, without being a complete annoyance, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and, you know, I don't want to jeopardize my position or no. I just want to jeopardize his position, no. position by, no. Um, but we're trying to be as professional as we can when we give this information to. And um, I think that to a degree with customer service, it's not only getting new systems up to speed to deal with uh, the tickets that are coming in and the phone system operating properly and so on. It's frustrating for, for all of us. And so just know and trust that when we hear this stuff on the call, Paul and I take our notes and we bring it up on the on the leadership calls and it, it is addressed mm -hmm. and it is aware but sometimes it's a manpower issue they just can't sure. get to everything um, right. and they're trying to hire as fast as they can i know that for a fact but fi finding qualified people right now is mm -hmm. very difficult and then when you find somebody you start to train and they and they quit so there is a frustration they don't want to say that to the field necessarily because we want to keep everybody positive because we are having such explosive growth and hearing stories like Stephanie, where somebody just goes and signs up and loves it. You know yeah. what I mean? That's kind of yeah. fun. So, so we are trying to plug the holes in the dam as quickly as we can on behalf of the field. Um, because let's face it, Paul and I are just associates like all you guys. Um, we're just trying to be a li liaison between the field to the best of our ability on these leadership calls to bring forth to their attention some of the issues that we're hearing from the field. And that's why we think this call is very important. And I hope you'll all agree with that. 
Oh, I totally agree. And I appreciate it. That's why I'm like, I'm not like, I hope it wasn't, I don't want to like piggyback a complaint, but just a suggestion. And, but it makes perfect sense, Paul, if that's all going to get done through the app, that why would they update the back office when that's not, it's not the way they're going to use it. So do we have any idea when that app is coming out or are you not at liberty to say? Um, I have it hope soon, but it's, it's been soon for a little bit. <laughs> okay. But I also, well, you know what? I, I really think Carol too, that, um, you know, you get frustrated because you're like, how difficult could it be to add something in the feed where all the birthdays come? Right. You know, but it is, it is. I would, I know that it would be. I, I don't, just... I don't know whether it is, but mm -hmm. even if, you know, email is fine. Just even not everybody uses email, but at least put the effort mm -hmm. in. Right. Because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if not everybody gets the email, but 80 percent do, then 80 mm -hmm. percent can inform the 20 percent. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. It. That would be helpful for now. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great point. And we will we mm -hmm. all I, I Paul and I will personally bring that up. It's a great point. And, and informing the field on some of these things are, are very, very important. And they're important mm -hmm. to me and my business are important to Paul and his business. And they're important to yeah. you guys in your business. So. So um, it, it's a it's a great point. It's very well taken, and and we will definitely um, bring it up for sure, Carol. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you guys. You're welcome. Yeah, and I know that it is seventies on the Saturday night, so uh, get going to Value Village, whoever's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to go. Well, to that's it in, in Canada. Go I don't know what it is in America, but <laughs> I just got to go to my closet on the far left side that I never go to. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm re I might rebirth the uh, cruise boat member. Oh yeah, I do remember. The, yeah, the wig <laughs> and the hippie band. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, great, uh, great um, suggestions as well, Carol. Thank you for that. Antonia, go ahead. We got you there. Can Can you hear me? Yeah. There, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, um, I have a person that ordered from the, uh, put in an order uh, cor with corporate mm -hmm. and she wants to uh, get in underneath me. Can you do that once they've ordered from corporate? Like did, she order, did she order as a customer? Yeah. Did she mean to order from corporate or did she mean to order from your site? No, she ordered from corporate and then she seen me uh, set up a, a trails in and she and she said I had a flyer said about membership and that she said, oh I never knew about that I could get twenty five percent off if I sign up or whatever, but can you do that when they've already ordered from corporate? That's my question. The only way she could order she could be eligible for the twenty five percent is to probably go onto your replicated website and use a different email address if she has one. She can't uh, become uh, an associate. That's what she wants to do. Oh, yeah. Well, she wants to become an associate. Then she she can just go to the the uh, your website mm -hmm. and, and sign up. And if she um, if she signs up from there, the only thing that may block her is her email may come up and block her. So she may have to phone corporate and ask for her email to be released. OK, that's what I was normally wondering. Because what, nope. normally what happens if you go from a customer to an associate, you have to go and log in under your customer portal and then you have to do, click on become an associate or upgrade to associate from your customer login and so i'm not sure paul maybe you know if she goes into corporate and clicks on customer login from corporate can she upgrade and then put in an associate number that's what i was just about to say is that got me thinking about that what would happen in that case i'm not sure um Maybe. Safest thing to do. She, she told me she ordered from corporate because I asked her if she ordered from another associate or something. Yeah, and but it's just different. If she ordered from you, then she could go into the customer portal. Once she upgrades, she's already coded to you. So you will get credit. But if she does the customer portal on corporate, we're wondering if it will give an option as to who. I see Kim's hands up here. Go ahead, Kim. You can unmute yourself. I just went through this. So that's oh, why good. I... I just talked to corporate. I had somebody that was a customer a long time ago under somebody else. So every time they would log in, my site would come up, but she kept getting kicked over to the other person. So, and uh, going back to our the old site, 
So all I did was call in with her name, the order number, and head office was 150% on it and had it all straightened out, no problem. And I looked after it for the customer so she didn't have to do anything about it. And then she was able to go in, her, her name, email, everything went right into the Super Patch site then, no problems. Yeah, but this person wants to sign up as an associate under Antonia. She's a customer yeah. under corporate, and then she I wants to get rid of that other email, like that other, um, because yes. she might have an, another number. That's what my client did. She had another customer associate number, a customer number, and they had to get rid of that. And uh, yeah, so she just has it. to phone. She just has to phone corporate then. Corporate customer. will look after it. And, do I do I then. phone corporate or does the the person that's getting in call? You that? can do it. I well, can you can either it. phone okay. or you can email as well. You can email okay. opportunity, but you need to have the details of what happened, the order number, and to get it switched. So what they probably have to do is switch her over to you first mm -hmm. and then have her be able to upgrade as an associate. But they'll tell you they're the best way of going about that. They'll take care of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, great question. Okay, I think we're 10 minutes... 12 minutes past the hour. So great questions, everybody. Uh, I have a question. Okay, Cindy, go ahead. Um, can customers refer customers? Mm -hmm. And how how do they go about doing that? Go and what to... uh, and do they get discounts for their first order? Yeah, there's a there's a brand champion program. It's at the bottom of your replicated website, Cindy. Okay. Right. Let's refer a friend. And when you click on that, it'll show you exactly how your customer can send out emails from their uh, login on your site. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. And every okay. customer that orders gets an email and tells them about the brand champion program. So they'll they'll have a login way right from their email as well. Okay, yeah, great question. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks everybody. We um, we appreciate everybody being on here tonight and um, great questions. And we're gonna probably do this maybe once a month. Um, and so uh, we wanna be able to address people's questions to the best of our ability. Um, so um, thank you for your questions and uh, um, we will, continue in the pursuit of excellence on this. And uh, all I can say right now is thank you for exercising patience um, with corporate as they try to um, keep up with the growth and keep up with the changes and get people hired and so on. Um, these are, trust me, these are great problems to have. They're frustrating as heck, but they're great problems to have because it means growth. And when we hear stories, Paul and I hear stories about people just going and signing up and wanna be part of this, that's exciting guys, that's awesome. That's really, really good. So hang in there. Appreciate your patience and uh, the frustration. I guarantee you will be less and less as we go forward. Hang in and we'll all get to the the, the uh, places that we want to be in this company if we just hang in and trust what's going to happen in the future. Anything else to close with, Paul? No, just uh, thanks for jumping on every week, guys. Jump on those calls tomorrow. Try to support them as best you can. Remember, you can't invite somebody and then you're not there. Your face isn't there. Like they're coming on there. They're expecting you to be on there. So I'll tell you, the more you show up, the more things just happen. Um, you, you're seen out there. Someone might relate to you on a call and just happen to come across it on YouTube randomly and want to reach out to you. I mean, it's all good stuff. So just uh, show up and, uh, and, and let's support these opportunity calls because we're the ones that are going to have this call with the testimonials. And those are huge. That Those are the stories people want to hear. And that's going to build your customers up. So uh, I hope to see everybody tomorrow. The best you can support these calls on a Tuesday. So, Yeah. And the one, one thing is, remember, guys, these calls are for you, your leverage. You leverage these calls and get people on these calls and um, make the effort to be a professional inviter and get them on these calls along with yourself. And you will see results from these calls and see your team grow. So thanks everyone. Have a great night <clears throat> and uh, a great rest of the week. Take care. Thanks, Paul, as always. We'll thanks, chat buddy. You tomorrow. Okay. Bye now. I asked everyone to unmute. So yeah. Have a good night, unmute and say good night. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you.
Keep practicing that hula hoop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here.